Hello artist, welcome to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins and I'm bringing you a video that I hope will help you just to have some fun. Do you ever want to just paint like a kid again? Well, that's what I did with these metallic watercolors. Oh, they're so much fun. I'd also really appreciate it if you would take a moment right now to like, subscribe, and hit that little bell icon to be notified of future videos. And I'm able to keep these free lessons coming because of the support from my patrons on my Patreon page. If you would like to consider becoming a patron, it's only $5 a month and you get extra goodies and extra content. So I saw these Van Gogh metallic and interface watercolors in a painting demonstration and I can't help it. I'm just a color addict. I had to get them and play with them. That's what this video is about. Playing a little bit. We often get too serious as artists. So I'm going to be talking about these in this lesson and doing a little painting demonstration. Now I found them on Dick Blick site and they're $50. Okay. So this is maybe like you say, Hey, I got a birthday coming up. Maybe somebody special in your life can get these for you. So as I usually do, I like to create a color guide. I just got a piece of watercolor paper and a black marker and I marked off all the names and numbers of the colors. Then I used a white plate just to squeeze out a little sample of each color and boy, they are sparkly, but I'm going to show you something that is to me just the coolest. You see how they look on this white watercolor paper. The magic happens to me anyway when you add these to black. So let me speed up through this a little bit and show you where the magic happens. Thus far these have all just been shimmery bronze gold and just some gorgeous iridescence going on. But this I want you to pay attention to this bottom row. This bottom row is what's going to really be crazy awesome when I put it on black paper. You might can see here that the color names from left to right are red, blue, violet, and green. Does that look like those colors on this white watercolor paper? I don't think so. And to demonstrate on the black surface, I'll be using Arteza. It's a six inch by six inch water friendly black paper. I love this stuff. Oh, and for the white surface, I used a piece of Arches. Um, watercolor paper. This is a great 100% cotton watercolor paper. You can see where I cut out the little six inch by six inch uh, square to make my color guides the same size. I also just used a white plate to apply all of the watercolor colors and of course you'll need some water. These are watercolors and a brush. This set does come with its own little brush and a nice little sponge to dampen. So I liked this brush fine, but I always kind of go back to my favorite brushes for watercolor, which are made by the Princeton Brush Company. Lots of these products can be found on my Amazon shop, and uh, I always have a link to that in the video. Now, to do white on this, I didn't want to use a charcoal pencil. I decided to use my Posca acrylic white marker. You know, this has got to show up on the black surface. So I did the same thing where I marked off all of the color names and numbers. And because that's rather boring to watch, let me jump forward and show you the magic of these metallic watercolors. Again, paying attention to this bottom row. So as you can see, putting these on black paper just really creates such a brilliant and metallic color and also too when it dries it's a little bit different when it dries and the neat thing is when you move it it literally is um, it, the reflections and the light changes the color so it's really kind of fun that's why I said this demonstration is about just having some fun I do know that we can get very uptight as artists so all right here oh, this one especially look at this blue now when I did this on the white surface it didn't look blue at all and those those little um, areas that are still kind of wet looking and white, they will dry to not show the white. It'll be just the blue or the purple. Look at the purple. It's like a magenta purple. And oh my gosh, purple's my favorite color. Is that not fantastic and fun? And the green, you can see now it really, now it's green. So these colors make sense when you put them on a black surface. Oh my goodness. They're still a little damp right here, but wow, so shimmery and gorgeous. And you know, I might veer away from some of the traditional painting, uh, professional painting, but Monet Cafe is about having fun 
and getting creative. All right, so now you can obviously see how the ones on the white card don't look like, especially those bottom colors at all, but they still have their function in uh, certain types of paintings you may wanna create. All right, so now I decided to have a little fun um, using my Princeton Brush Company, two different brushes here. One of them has a really nice point to it. And of course, some water. I often like to use two containers of water and also some paper towels. And I am going to use, in this case, the white charcoal pencil. So as you saw at the beginning, I thought dragonflies would be really fun to create some iridescent shimmery colors. And I decided to do this from imagination and just play. When's the last time you just got out some drawing paper or a surface to paint on and you just said, you know what, I'm just gonna play today. I know I can tell that you guys do this because I do it and in all my different art groups, I can see it happening all the time where artists get a little stagnant or you know, just feeling a little down that their work is uh, not loose enough. And I think the reason for that is because we're not playing. And I like to say to paint with the thought that, you know what, I might just throw this away. And also I think of it too like, I'm just gonna talk to you guys while I create these. Um, oh, real quick, let me say, I took a kneaded eraser. I didn't want the white lines quite so dark. I wasn't sure if they would show up still um, when I added the watercolor. So I decided just to kind of knock down the white a little bit. And um, I actually ended up not using the white plate for this one. I decided to use this little watercolor uh, plastic palette. These are so cheap, you can get them at the dollar store. Um, but anyway, back to what I was saying, I find that often as beginning artists, we have a goal in mind that we want to have a beautiful painting when we're done. And so we kind of get too serious and we also judge ourselves too harshly when the painting is complete. And so that's why I think starting with an attitude of just going, you know what, I'm going to be like a kid again. You know, when you got a box of crayons and a coloring book when you were a kid, you didn't think, oh, I'm going to create a masterpiece. You thought, I'm just going to have some fun. And so that's part of the point about this. And, you know, like I said, I might, I might veer off the professional artist type of videos, but Monet Cafe is not really about that. It's about learning to paint, of course, and hopefully giving you guys a lot of good content and information with the real core art principles. But we don't want to lose that childlike passion of art. And I really believe it's, I'd say, more than 50% in the joy of the creation. You know, of course, there's some value in the final product. You know, I'm not going to say it's not because of course we all do hope to get to where we're creating some beautiful art that we can share. But I think more of it is about the experience than we usually realize or that we usually embrace. So that's kind of my little, my little mama artist talk to you guys right now. And I I'm saying this from experience because I am a super competitive person. Any of you guys out there like that? And uh, when I was starting in art, I was comparing myself to so many other artists. And I, I didn't have the skills under my belt yet. So it was kind of ridiculous for me to compare myself to other artists. So I think of it like um, other genres of creativity, like music. Uh, when you're learning to be a musician, you don't just jump right in there and play a song. You got to do the hard work first, but you can do it through having fun. So, all right, now let's get to some instruction. <laughs> That's enough talking. So as you can see, I had already applied kind of a shimmery, silvery color. I didn't give you guys all the names to these colors, but this one is the, what's called the red, I believe. And I'm just glazing it over the wings in different areas. I'm trying, trying not to apply it too awfully thick, but part of this was experimentation for me because I had never used these types of watercolors either. So that's where all the, the fun comes in. So I added just a few um, of the wings of the dragonflies having a little bit of the red. And then I thought I'd mix it up and try a few other colors on some of the different wings. And this one I believe is the blue, which is really crazy. That doesn't look blue, right? But once again, here comes the magic. You start putting this down and it's like, voila, there it is. I talk about magic a lot when I'm painting because I've shared this story before, I think in the last video, my dad bought me some 
kind of cheap magic sets when I was a kid. I like to use the word illusion rather than magic. And uh, I actually took magic or illusion lessons. He saw I really liked, I, I liked the um, aspect of of making people go, wow, how'd you do that? And that's kind of what art is like too. We're taking a three-dimensional world and putting it on a two-dimensional surface in kind of a way that fools the eye or tricks the eye. So yeah, I took magic lessons. Oh, here's the green. Look how fun that is. Um, and I actually, I, don't, I was like, uh, I think... I was probably like seven or eight when I really got into it. Then when I was in sixth grade, how old are you, 11? I started doing... Um, um, magic shows. I would do birthday parties and um, things at, at my school. I did a presentation, even with the the fire and stuff like that. So I really got into it. Um, I wanted to mention too, this is one that's kind of a, a pretty gold color. And um, I wanted to point out that, see, you can see in the upper right-hand corner there, some of them some particular colors are very liquidy, and I wasn't sure what to do about that, but I just squeezed it out. You've, some of them had a lot of liquid at the front of the tube, and they seem to work fine as long as you squeezed out enough to kind of mix it up with some of the part that's a little bit more solid. So just dabbing in some color, and, and once again, my dragonflies, they're, they're nothing special. I just thought, hmm, let me go out of my head and think, what do dragonflies look like? I probably could have done some better dragonflies if I had pulled up some reference images. Um, but I did have fun. This was a Saturday when I did this. And Saturday is my favorite day of the week. I just love um, just being able to do something for me and to relax and and uh, just take a, a little break for the day. And I say a break. It's not really a break. I still always work, but I do it for the fun of it. So I hope you guys take some time to do things like that for yourself as well. And I had realized all of my dragonflies were from a kind of looking down on them position. So I decided to make this little guy turned a little bit so that his wings were in a different position. All right, all of that was real time. So let me speed up a little bit. I gave him some little eyes. I later add some red to the eyes. And um, then I decided to... This was just, you know, not fun enough. So I decided to add some splashes of white gouache and just to make it look like there was maybe stars or fireflies or anything like that. And I just embraced the fun and creativity of this. And again, I do believe this is going to make you a better artist when you try to do something professionally. You'll loosen up. Your Hopefully your marks will be more gestural. I added a little bit more color to the wings, a little bit more of the gold. Isn't that fun? Oh, and I wanted to mention, I know a lot of you guys... Um, are like I was, and I still am very, I have to be very frugal. And some of you are not in the financial position to go out and buy a $50 uh, watercolor set. So use whatever you have. You don't have to do this with metallic watercolors. You can get out a piece of watercolor paper and just do it with uh, regular watercolors on white watercolor paper. Or if you have black paper, use acrylic. You can do this in pastel, but the goal is to loosen up be a kid again and have some fun. So I decided to add some little swirly cues. I'm just totally going like, what can I do here? And just letting my brain go weird, <laughs> which it does kind of naturally. <laughs> so anyway, so I had a little bit more fun with this. I did like it with um, just the black and the little gouache splashes and my swirly cues. Is that, a, is that a term, swirly cue? But I decided to do something else that was a little fun. Maybe I experiment too much on my channel. I don't know. But I thought, hmm, what would happen if I decided to add some of this pretty blue in the negative spaces? Um, so I just kind of worked around the dragonflies, leaving a little bit of a, a black edge. Uh, I didn't go all the way to the wing, in other words. I left a little uh, edge of black around the dragonfly and around the wings, and I liked it. Like I said, I, I liked it before, but I thought this added a little bit more pizzazz. I'm like, why not embrace this? Let me get as much metallic watercolor down as I can. Okay, so you get the idea of my technique here. So let me speed this up a little bit. Look at these colors though. Wasn't this fun? Now let me show you the final here and something else that's really neat. 
it really does change color when you lift it up and hold it and actually turn the painting. It adds different shimmer um, effects to it. And also it reacts differently in different lighting. This is it laying down on my, uh, my surface, my table. And then I picked it up and took it into a little area. Sorry for the vertical footage here, but I took it to an area in my house. I call it my baby gallery. It's really just a hallway with some neat lighting. And you could really see the shimmery effect so I hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope you tolerate my um, random acts of creativity so just have some fun that's the point of this video I am so grateful if you're a subscriber I'm so grateful if you're a patron of mine if you would consider becoming a patron I'd really appreciate that and you guys get out there and play have some fun and happy painting